ES Cinder remix of Dark Souls 3 by Rotaka. Folks, you know what that song means. <laughs> I sure do. Yep. I had to think for a minute about which track it was because I'm so. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. just got that, that mental habit of you, saying, you want to just blah, say, Metal Gear now? Solid 2, blah, 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 Prince of Darkness. Oh, it is such a good I intro need theme, though. Yeah, 61. 61. Yeah, yeah, it was, that was go. a good song, too, though. So, you know. I heard whatever. it again on Third Wolf's stream. I want to say it was last week, and I was just like, that's weird. I heard it twice on someone else's stream over the last month. Tell them they need new material. Yeah. No, they were just like, hey, I downloaded the whole torrent of all of the OCR stuff, and I'm like, that's not very random, but no, I suppose it is. It is. Yeah, I heard like it, and I stopped what I was Yeah, <laughs> stopped what I was doing, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's why I'm just like, I hear some of our oh, old music, goodness. and I'm just like, shit, which one was that from? Which journey or whatever, because, you know, Seeking Infinity. So, that's right. Yeah. We only had, like, what? Three or four different openers, probably. I want to say four. Four. I think we had four. Yeah, one for each journey, and then one for classic insert credits, and then oh, this that's one, true. I suppose, huh? Classic oh, insert credits. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you mean the one that like was two episodes ago, or what? Yeah, yeah maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. We're new age now. We yeah. are. We're the, we're you, the new insert. You just you just we're throw in the, the word sixteen bit era now. I guess <laughs> you throw the word classic after it, and you know that's that's just the the that's just how you market it. So that's, wait, we're gonna get right. scalped now, and we're gonna get listed on eBay for like five times the amount. Yeah. Okay, oh, that'd be cool. I mean, NES classic, anyone? So it's all uh, creative. It's all Creative Commons, anyways. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well. well uh, sorry. No, I, I was just going to so. continue rambling. Oh, about okay. No, yeah. I was going to cut it there and be yeah, like, all right, let's, let's do get it. started. Yeah. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm Mr. Bond. I'm Tormod. And I'm Saxon. Insert credits round 54, small pink and round, which I'm sure we all know what that means. Yes. Y I don't. Tell me. <laughs> it's the Pepto Bismol diarrhea chunk. <laughs> That's right. I forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> yep. That's why I tweeted that. And we are clipping. Yes, Interesting. We are. All right. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, yeah, we're so, professionals. Yeah, that was a thing because of Smash Brothers. I want to say it was. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Because uh, melee. Yes. Yes. Correct. And uh, that was a good time. <laughs> oh, it still is a good time. Oh yeah. I've been playing a bunch of it lately. Actually, I don't blame you. Just because. Just carry on. Don't don't worry about me. Worry no, about I was me. just kind of like, well, I yeah. can help you. You just gotta point out the knob. No, well, I gotta yeah. know which one it is first. <laughs> and then you were so far away from the mic that nobody heard you. And it yeah. was just like, that's okay. I was no, it wasn't important. We're good. Yep. <laughs> Housekeeping. <laughs> Gain structure. Uh, next show will be the weekend after we come back from Midwest Gaming Classic, yeah, which I believe correct. is the second weekend in April. I right? literally just closed the calendar because I'm a putz. Nice. All right, we are I was back. Like, I can thousand. get rid of all of these tabs that are open. The ones that I prepped. <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's look at April here. Yeah. All right. Midwest Gaming Classic is the 13th through the 15th. Oh, that's right, because our show's on 420. Oh, that's right. Why didn't we remember that? No, we're not going to be in Milwaukee to get free pizza then. Uh, Damn. Wah, wah. Yeah. Oh, well. We'll just have to make our own free pizza that night <laughs> yeah. and pay for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Free. Yeah. I already bought it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. So 420 will be our next show, round 55. Ooh. Uh, title to be determined. I think we already have 56 set up as well. Actually, that's going to be yes, pretty exciting for next month because three days before that, we'll have our our first walkthrough of the place. Oh, nice. We get to look yeah. at the, the marathon setup, sort of, because at least the walls, well, I, the framing will be up by then. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the audio and electrical walkthrough. Yep. So, so I'm going to be like, Automation Arts, please don't bend me over and make me pay you $5,000. However, I need some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah, gonna be that yeah new marathon space i might take some photos might post them alongside the show announcement for 420 it'll be a good time <laughs> 420 blaze it dude <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be lit ah uh, uh, lol all right we're done <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> moving into may uh is yes. the 18th yeah we do or 56 i don't think we did we june. we don't have one in june yet that's fine June is going to be a thing. <laughs> uh, I guess it will be for you guys. Huh? Yeah, well, yeah. here's the, uh, here's the thing. thing huh? So uh, the 15th is probably going to be the best. Um, the 22nd is our new home orientation. The 23rd, we leave for SGDQ. So you'll live in your house for about 24 hours. Not even. Yes. No. <laughs> 18 hours. No, that's the pre-home finish thing. Oh, I thought yeah. that was like, here's the keys. I have No, fun. that's on the 28th. Oh, right after you get back. So <laughs> what we're going to do is go to SGDQ from Saturday till Monday or Tuesday, come back, make sure that we finish the packing that we didn't finish beforehand. The movers are coming on Wednesday night to take everything out. 
we finish cleaning, we close and do all of the other stuff on Thursday. And then everybody comes back from SGDQ through Madison and stays at the new place on the floor because we're not going to have any furniture by then. Unless we pre-buy and be like, hey, deliver it on this day, which could be a thing. Yeah. I want to get real beds for our real guest rooms now. Aw. I'm excited. But, yeah. Are you just going to get rid of those two futons then or are those going uh, elsewhere? No, they'll, they'll be used in some capacity. I have two, well, one's a much better frame than the second one, but I have four futon mattresses in new shape. So I'd rather use them. I got them like... Double up. Uh, yeah, actually, when we were showing the condo, we had the nice futon frame with two mattresses, and we'd put like a a twin sheet set over the top of it, and it looked like a bed. Nice. So yeah, that was our ghetto bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're we're still gonna use them in some way. We'll have a lot of guest space. It's gonna be pretty cool. So we'll be able to host more than just like a person on the couch. A person. Yeah. A single person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to get a second couch. We've made the determination that because we're doing LVT flooring in the marathon space, that we should probably get furniture that's easy to clean off, too. LVT? That's the uh, linoleum stuff. It's the linoleum oh, wood okay. thing that I, I was going for. Oh, laminate. Yeah. Okay. Or the laminate. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking of getting, like, that full leather stuff for the furniture so that in case anybody spills a drink, we can just wipe yep. it off. Yep. So... Yeah, that's the goal. So we're probably going to keep all of our existing stuff up in the, the actual living room that nobody's ever going to use. And then we'll just get all new stuff for the basement because that's going to be the new shit anyway. So excited. <laughs> it's oh. going to be so great. We're going to produce so much cool stuff. Home ownership, man. Yeah. I'm excited. It does help. Yeah. We have the smallest yard ever. There's it's some the shitty, best. there's some shitty parts about it, but eh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we're not going to have an ISP drill a hole through our new wall. Yeah. And make sure you watch them like, oh, <laughs> so they don't do that. Yeah, I Idiots. actually got uh, the ISP in contact with my personal builder now so that they can pre-bore and pre... Uh, what the hell am I thinking of here? Bury the line. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So just to get all that crap done now that we haven't even backfilled yet. So that way it could just be like, here, we're just going to run this Ethernet cable and that's done. And I'm going to be like, thanks. Yep, it's a good idea. Yeah, so I'm excited. We're going to have not cable internet. It's going to be the best. It is pretty good. Fiber yeah. is pretty nice. I like being able to upload it more than three megabit to my online backup. Yeah. To be able to stream at more than three. Yeah, about 3,000 kilobit is when it starts getting iffy if I go any faster than that. I mean, we're rated for seven, but. Mm, yeah, but you yeah. don't seven, mm, I'm sure. If you ever saturate one, it tanks the other. Yeah. So it's just yeah, kind of yeah, like whatever. yeah, yeah. It's okay uh, if, like, literally nothing else is using the internet at the same time, but that never happens because everything is checking itself and updating itself and all this other mm -hmm. garbage, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's going to be a good time, but we're going to have a lot more, like, it's not the word overhead is what I'm thinking of, but we have a lot more room to get to that overhead. So. You've got a lot more headroom. Headroom! headroom. Thank you. There's the head word you were looking yeah. for. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hey, at least I got half the word. That's 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 a good yeah. start. That's, that's a, a good lot start. better than I anticipated for tonight. But yeah. Anyway, June's gonna be pretty busy. July is gonna be pretty cool, actually. If we wanted to do an easy show on July thirteenth, Friday the thirteenth. Is it another Friday the thirteenth? It is. Yeah. We're gonna miss the one in uh, April, but I suppose we 13th. are thirteenth. Yeah. That's so true. it is. Well, why the fuck not? Yeah, we'll just throw that out there right June away. Third, and it's. 58. I wonder what Bam. cool game we can name the show after at that month. There's so much stuff coming out. Yeah, Max had them. Not quite. Hey, yeah. Shotgun, how's it going? <laughs> also, hey, Chase. Boom, boom, bam. Okay, cool. Around the world. Indeed. Oh, there's a lot going on. There is yeah. quite a bit, which is why I tried to keep my list short, because I knew we would probably find a whole bunch more. Well, let's see what you got here. Nintendo oh, added, yeah. then removed... <laughs> Like a week after user reviews on Switch games, you know, because why not? Yeah, Nintendo's being Nintendo, but uh, you know that could have also been because of the whole big Switch firmware five point release, because they were probably doing A B testing or something like that. Yeah, I mean they did their whole yeah. Thanks for helping us evaluate this feature. Blah 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 blah. I might come back. Blah 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 blah. Who knows? Nice, but at least they're trying. At least they're trying. Did you hear about that firmware update though? I only heard about it in passing. 
So apparently, and this escaped my show notes because I'm always reminded of fun ancillary things. Um, apparently, uh, firmware version five, they're noticing that if you do the update while docked in a non-official dock, that it bricks the system. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? And nobody knows if it's like intentional. I wouldn't imagine Nintendo oh, would do anything if like they that. Did, ooh. Because like I'm kind of curious because my travel dock uses all of the guts of the official one. So I'm wondering if that would actually affect it, and I'm getting curious. I wouldn't try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that seems like a bad idea. Yeah, that's a possibility. But um, yeah, my Switch hasn't been in use since the Twisted Metal Marathon that I'll talk about in a bit. But um, yeah, yeah, that was a thing that people were talking about because that firmware update went live, what was it, yesterday? The day before, maybe? It was definitely this week. Hmm. That seems really strange because I figured the dock was just a plastic shell with some pass-through on it. Yeah, no, there's an actual PCB on the inside. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a whole chipset and everything because they, you know, I they got to have a controller the for the USB and all that. Video out and whatever, right? Yeah, that too. Huh. Well, that's shitty. Yeah. <laughs> also, the Nintendo Direct came out. Yeah. Everybody was shitting themselves yeah. over that. <laughs> yeah, and I, I noticed how you have the bit. one important game that's on there. That's the one I care about the most. <laughs> yeah. So Smash Bros. for Switch sometime in 2018. Hmm. And it's, everybody's like kicking each other over like, it's a remake. No, it's a new game. And it's like, whatever. But there's all, clearly yeah. some new stuff that's being teased. Yeah, so with all the info I've seen, I'm I'm leaning towards new game, which is yeah, great. Likewise. Yeah, likewise. I love, love the fake info and, and fake <laughs> leaks coming out of that. Yeah, Jimmy Neutron's totally a character. <laughs> oh, and, oh, no. Sans yeah. Undertale, you know. Yeah, of course. And when is X announced for for Smash yeah. or whatever? That's coming yeah, back. You get that every yeah. couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. But anyways, I'm excited because it was really holding off on Switch until like one or two more like good, really solid games. I'm like, oh, okay, there it is. There you yeah. go. I mean, the Switch already has a really solid. Oh, library, it sure does. Especially you know when you compare it to the previous generations. And also consider that it's a year old now, and it has so many. Da- or damn good games that i've already purchased because i was like these are great Mm -hmm. you've got super mario odyssey you have mario kart 8dx you have um breath of the wild the big one you have all of the fun games that people are doing now uh scissor clips and one two switch and all that other stuff Mm -hmm. um like i'm not into those kinds of things but they have a lot of major things out there so yeah smash or switch yeah that's gonna be a big thing yeah yeah so it's a big first party deal so i was like okay as soon as that smash bundle is out there Yep. Smash that buy button. That's what? right. I really hope that they get a story mode back in there because I have to say, yeah. playing Subspace Emissary with you is really fun. I would really like to mode. have another story mode. It was I, a good I like Smash story mode. Now, I, I didn't play a whole heck of a lot of the Wii U version. Was there not a story mode thing in that? I may have booted the game twice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clipping. Yeah, it's all right. All right. But yeah, um, it looks cool. I mean, we got to play the handheld version because, you know, the whole Wii U slash 3DS thing yeah, kind of yeah, tied yeah. together. I, I'm i really curious if they're going to try to do something like that again or if they're going to be like, guess what? The Switch does both, bitches. So, yeah. I kind of hope know. that they just stick to one. I, I think the Wii U one was limited a little bit because of that. Yeah. Just because you know, 3DS can't really do as they much. They wanted to make sure that there was some feature parody there. Right, and I yeah. was just yeah. kind of like, that kind of held you back, but it was cool. It was but... a good experiment, I think. I honestly think that was their precursor to the Switch, though, because they're like, That's true. look at all these fun things we can do on handheld, because like we had the gyroscope and everything, and they had some mm-hmm. more stuff, but mm-hmm. like, who wanted to lug around the freaking two-and-a-half-hour battery charge Wii U tablet thing? I'm like, no, nice try. No, hard pass. But like now that they've got the hardware for it, yeah, this is going to be a big thing, and I really, mm-hmm. really hope that they get all the stuff in there that everybody's clamoring for. Like, It would get me to play it if there was a story mode, because that's how I got better at the game with Brawl, like, I suck at fighters. And going through the same tutorial crap over and over again gets really old. So being able to go through the story mode and be like, okay, so you get some of the fundamentals for all the characters because, mm-hmm. you know, you have to beat them and then you have to use them because it's story. Yeah. That helped me out quite a bit. Yeah, I can only imagine how large the roster is going to be for this one. Oh, yeah. Because Brawl was already pushing it. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of folks. Brawl was... Be, of course. I mean... Granted, I never played a whole lot of uh, 64 or Melee or even the Wii U one. I played the Wii U one a little bit, but um, I don't know. Like, Brawl just seems like it is the one to beat right now because it had so many features. 
um, it was just played the hell out of for the longest time because the Wii was out for so long before mm-hmm. they had another replacement console. Like, I don't know. Like, there's just so much going on with it. And the soundtrack was gigantic. Like, you had hundreds of tracks because everybody remade tracks from yeah. games that were in mm-hmm. the backgrounds and whatnot. And I don't know. It, it was just a really, really fun experience. And I, I'm, I'm still terrible at fighting games, but it, it actually made it fun for me. I don't think Brawl is as popular in the competitive scene. I, I still think that Melee yeah, is probably odd number reasons. one. Yeah, Melee, I think, is Or tops. Smash 4, because Smash 4 is Smash like the 4. new thing. I guess it is. So, but Anyways, I don't that, know. That's a topic for another time. Cause I got, yeah, 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 yeah. I got some issues with Brawl that I could definitely <laughs> let fly. <laughs> oh, that's I'm fair. I'm going to talk about it. Project yeah. M. Uh, yeah, Project M was very good. Yeah. It was much better. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, any other Nintendo Direct stuff we want to talk about right away? Because I wanted <sighs> to kind of get that I, out right away. I mean... Undertale. I, that's Undertale yeah. and the new Kirby, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah the new Kirby uh, was re- released today. Um, Target had, a, I guess, an exclusive special where you can get a special Kirby bag, which some Kirby uh-huh. collectors were like, this is actually really cool. Um, e Bloody Candy over in Minneapolis, ended up getting one. He got number three of six at the store that they had. And nice. Was, he was like, that was worth it. He actually canceled his pre-order that got 20% off on Amazon to go get this. So he was like, yeah, it was totally worth it. Mm. As a collector, uh, a big fan of Kirby games, yeah, that was cool. So I'm glad it wasn't mm. just garbage. Yeah, right on. Uh, but yeah, there was Kirby Star Allies. Um, there is a solo and a co-op mode. And he's all like, hey, guess what? Mm. We should totally learn the speed run for co-op. And I'm like... Sure, whatever. We're close enough to visit each other. We yeah, can totally make this true. happen. Do it up. So, um, yeah. My only other Kirby experience was very briefly uh, Kirby's Dreamland when I was like in a Toys R Us in the late '90s on a Game Boy. I think it was Dreamland. Yeah, Dreamland does the Game Boy series. And then um, with you, like over the course of a night, we went through most of Kirby's epic yarn once. Yeah, and that's my experience with Kirby, mm-hmm. the whole thing. So. I'm really looking forward to it because the game has a lot of hype. And um, from what I've heard so far of the people who uh, either got the digital version or went earlier today to play it, they're pretty happy. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's a good series, certainly. That's really the only thing that I had that was related to the Nintendo Direct, though. How about you? Um, I didn't have anything further uh, related to Direct. Okay. Um, just uh, Kirby, Undertale... Uh, other aforementioned games that kind of thing nice i feel like there was more to it but once smash hit the scene it's just like that yeah doesn't matter (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's like we've already determined that we were we were at maximum hype uh at that point (sighs) one more thing about smash one more okay one more they need to have as epic of a title screen song as they have on literally every other game they Mm -hmm. have to keep that going because like uh those songs are like the best part of the OST. You have to have a really strong starter. I don't know if I'd call the OG Smash theme that epic. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of like Melee and Onward. Yeah, I yeah. never really played much of the original Smash, but like uh, the intro to Brawl, like with the whole FMV and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they that knew conjures how to do up it. some good nostalgia. So I'm really hoping for that. Anyway, that's enough of that. An expired security certificate locked out Oculus Rift headsets for, I want to say, a day or so. Wow. How? <laughs> an expired code signing certificate. Apparently, it phones home to check that it's a legit like VR runtime before it lets you use the damn headset. So somebody wow. forgot to renew or replace the cert with the renewed one. Yeah. And it was all like, no. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are we still making mistakes like that? I don't know. You you say that, and yet it's a real problem for enterprise IT. Yeah, I'm not gonna say any names, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But no, this uh, underscores the point that you don't really own the hardware now. So yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. great. That thanks. That's great. Thanks, Facebook. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> you shit lords. <laughs> I'm still gonna blame Facebook for everything. Hey, yeah. that's legit. <laughs> That's legit. They get everything now that they bought it out. Uh, but in slightly better VR news, a new Steam VR update will auto scale resolution now going to the headsets cool. depending on awesome. how much power your GPU can put out. It will never go below the native res of the first gen headsets for Vive and Oculus Rift, obviously. Right. But as now the Vive Pro comes out with better resolution, it'll 
bump up the power going to it as much as your GPU can handle. You know, I'm kind of curious about the Vive Pro real briefly. Like, have we heard any more like definitive specs yet? Yes, we have resolution on it. I'm going to need to look it up real quick. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. I kind of like that though, because you know, like when you're when you're plunking down for some you know serious uh, hardware, you know, it's it's kind of nice to like automatically reap the benefits. Oh, this is a bad idea going to the official site. They're not yeah, going to show me anything. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be all of the hype and none of the specs. Fuck, just <laughs> tell just, me about it. <laughs> you just totally got marketed to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As we just zoop past it. Yeah. Okay. okay. 1400 by 1600 per eye with the Vive Pro. Nice. Yeah, same 90 hertz panels. Uh, better fit and form. According to this review, it's the best headset for those with glasses. So, yay. Oh, nice. right on. Uh, that's about it. Well, improved audio headband thing. Uh, but, mm, this is probably software support, but support for two lighthouse or more than two lighthouse you know, sets. Shit. I just scale. realized that we're going to have like a 12 by 16 room now. Hmm. Might be my first foray into VR. Room scale VR is pretty sweet. Yeah. I have literally never tried it with the exception of wearing your dev kit one once. So, oh, not even. <laughs> no? You should uh, get into contact with Travis. I should. Get a vibe. That's true. Um, but yeah, I've never really had an interest in VR until very recently when people are like, okay, it's actually starting to come into its own now. That's cool. Yeah, um, I like VR on like a technical level, but I don't think it's something that I'm going to enjoy like people seem to think that someone is going to enjoy it. No, you're definitely either a true believer or a skeptic. Yeah. It's not it's point. not just like the skeptic. I I've established that like partaking in VR experiences is not my deal, but I absolutely love the tech behind it and all the science that goes into like making it a very convincing experience. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. still fascinating. Now, when we were at Midwest Gaming Classic, it was two years ago, but they also had it last year. Um, they had a, a PlayStation game. I want to say it was like Spider-Man Pinball or something like that, but mm -hmm. they had the PSVR set up for it, mm -hmm. and it was actually really cool. Like, obviously, it's a seated experience, but like you were using the flippers with your hands and whatnot. It was oh, actually pretty cool. Um, I mean, like I'd probably be doing a lot of stuff like that, and the room VR thing would probably make me really uneasy. Because I'd be all like, where am I in relation to things? When am I going to start tripping on stuff? So, I don't they, know. They actually solve that really interestingly. And they they have you set up the edge, and then if you get close to one of the edges, it pops up like a translucent wall. So you oh, know okay. to just not do that. Sure, sure. Okay. Not go forward. Obviously, you want to clear the floor or whatever, but... Yeah, I'm with you uh, on I'm that, guessing Chase. The detection, the detection has probably uh, gotten a lot better with that as well for the... New Aug gen. <laughs> I agree with you. Augmented reality seems like something that yeah. would totally draw me in a lot more. I would I would buy heavily into AR myself. Like that's and AR is gonna be the next big thing. Once yeah. once VR is a well developed and integrated technology, they're gonna start making it portable where you don't need to have these bomb ass mm -hmm. GPUs hooked up to you constantly. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have mm -hmm. like a freaking nuclear reactor on your back just to power the <laughs> damn thing. It's like but I've seen having, a movie about that. Right? <laughs> but just having, you know, useful things, and then <clears throat> you can have your own little cutesy mini games and whatnot. Yeah. Like, you can have the Google Maps mini games on your face. That could be a thing. So, I don't know. AR definitely strikes me as something cool. But the reason I went into this whole thing about the HTC Vive Pro is, what the hell is HTC even doing these days that's notable outside of that? Not phones. Well, you're. I was going <laughs> to yeah. mention... They do have the U12 and the U12 Plus, which is code names for the Desire, the new Desires, because um, the Desire was a, a phone, gosh, six, seven years ago, maybe older. Uh, but like they haven't had any compelling hardware outside of VR, and they're just trying to claw back some of their market because they had like the renaissance of HTC phones mm -hmm. probably around the same time ago, eight, nine mm -hmm. years ago. But like. Lately, all you've heard about, like, the only thing that turns a profit for them is VR. So, one, I hope that they continue to develop it because they are really pushing the other companies ahead. Yeah. And two, I hope that they still get enough funding to stay afloat. That'd be a thing. <laughs> the M8. Oh, gosh. The M7 was the one that I had, and I thought it was, like, the most solid phone that I have had Android wise ever since. Is that the one that I got from you on loan for a bit? Hell yeah, you did. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the that one. Shit, I loved it. And that was back when um, HTC Sense was worth a damn. Like the M8 was probably the beginning of the decline. 
but like the M10 and whatnot, everybody's been having boot loop issues with that. But like, what manufacturer hasn't had that problem lately? Yeah. Freaking LG. So, even Samsung's been having some problems. But regardless, um, I really hope that HTC's hardware endeavors continue moving forward, and I hope mm -hmm. that with their success in VR, that they can start putting a little more effort into their mobile stuff too. Because I have a feeling if they ever like had the marriage between you know Android super powered phone with some sort of either wireless or USB um, VR headset or something like that, or even AR, that would be really neat. Yeah. So I'm really hoping that that development can keep moving that way. Well, that niche is sort of partially covered by the Gear VR stuff. Yeah, but I mean, but that's you put a phone players. in your freaking thing. Yeah. Like, I want a totally separate device. You want, you want a standalone. Yeah. Like, like Oculus is doing with their kind of mid-tier. I don't even know if it's mid-tier. They're kind of inside-out tracking, just kind of a standalone headset. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it wouldn't even need to be <laughs> that necessarily. Like, even going back to the AR thing, like, if you had a way to integrate, like, something that clipped onto existing glasses, or if you could have prescription lenses where it would have the information being fed from the phone, mm -hmm. Even something like that would be kind of cool if you wanted to have near field, like high fidelity wireless connections, or even if Bluetooth ever stopped being a piece of shit. Mm. Or if you just wanted to have that USB C cable plugged into it or something like that, almost like a heads or like your earbuds and whatnot. Yep. As soon as they can get it on non specialized frames, yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Yep. <laughs> I'd totally. probably go in for that and be like, oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And not like Google Glass hipster bullshit crap no. like that. That's yeah. dumb. Like if I ever had something that was the equivalent of a heads up display, that would be the best. Yeah. So I mean, I don't even need to be like super, oh my God, we gotta go Halo with it. No, I mean like instead of taking my eyes off the road for something, like, oh no, I just got an on call or something like that. Better freaking push three to accept the ticket. No, I can just be like, okay, boop, or something like that, and just see what it is, if it's even worth my time. I don't know. Just having stuff like that. I think HTC, with its innovations, they could be pushing a lot of that, but they're just a little more timid because everything in their mobile space in the last five to ten years has been shit. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I feel like they are the front runners to do any of that kind of stuff. They just need to, you know, do it. Well, I'm kind of glad they've been focusing on VR. Lately. Yeah. Oh, likewise. And I mean, like, it's really good, like, again, because they're pushing all yeah. of the other manufacturers to be better. It's a good, solid push, and if Vive Pro is really as good as it sounds like it is... Oh, that seems like the one I would totally buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that's exciting to me. Better be good. It God, better. Damn it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially now with all the adaptive stuff, we're not top... We don't need 100% top-of-the-line hardware, like, latest-gen everything to actually mm -hmm. have a compelling experience with it. That's great. Yeah. Yep. Especially given GPU prices. But we <laughs> talked oh, yeah. about that last time. Yeah. Speaking of GPUs, though, um, nobody knows what the hell the new NVIDIA cards are going to be called. Is it going to be 1100 series or 2000 series? Nobody knows. But everybody's speculating that the the 80 non-TI models are going to be, what, 1500 bucks roughly? But uh. with all the volatility in the hardware right now and the fact that um, cryptocurrency is just shitting and then somehow unshitting repeatedly it's weird so volatile right now whatever everybody was expecting nvidia to announce their new hardware in march at their big event well apparently people are now saying that it's not even close to being ready hmm. we're not even going to start seeing any cards being manufactured until say the end of august at the earliest oh, so wow. okay yeah that gives us a little bit of breathing room because i was all like well shit yeah, like, but all the same, like you better hope that you have your 1080 now, or you're basically SOL until their next. Uh, oh yeah, like I ended up getting the 1080 Ti, like the awesome card that we had. Yeah, that was the last good mass drop sale on anything GPU related. That was it. Everything past then was just being mm -hmm. um, eaten up by crypto. So yeah. I'm really glad that we got that card. It is beefy as fuck. We're gonna yeah. have to learn to live with that for a while and start pushing it yeah that that particular 1080 ti that we got is still pretty like it's, it's the already overkill yeah. yeah but we can push it higher we have it at clock speeds right now we yeah. could just or um standard whatever stock stock thank you yeah we have it at stock speeds right now and i think that you know we can push it more here's the deal about that um like do you think that you would be able if something happened to the card be able to get a feasible replacement before the next generation of hardware hmm, who knows i wouldn't count on it yeah that, that's why i'm saying I mean, it like, is under warranty they specifically say hey guess what we've top bin this card you can do these things 
But Here's our like, software. Just flip can, a switch. You can overclock under warranty. Yeah. Well, screw it. Then just do it. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> I was thinking it air, wasn't. No, under the air cooling, they give you a bunch of overhead. Like yeah. it's it's at the the stock speeds right now, but because they're top bin, you can push it up about fifteen percent. Yeah. And if you want to switch over to their other BIOS where it doesn't have any of the voltage regulations and stuff, you mm-hmm. can just be like, whatever. You're gonna take the ownership on this. You better have this thing water cooled because it'll just allow you to do whatever values you want. Sure. Yeah. So I don't know. I was playing around with um, FF15 Windows Edition, and it is gorgeous. It is a gorgeous um, game with the with the 4K texture pack. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not even just beneficial there. Yeah. But I mean, because the the base game was 1080p super sampled. If you wanted to get up to like 2560, 1440 on the PS4 Pro, it never got up to 4K. But um, seeing that game, I, I think I was able to get it to about 1440p 60 at 60 frames per second and have it look good without stuttering and whatnot. If you ever got that to be 4K 60, that would be the hotness. Like it is surprisingly performant for being a PC port. So I, I really hope that um, whatever GPUs come out next, that it's going to be worth me splooging a bunch of money for because I want to see like 2018 games in 4K 60 sooner than later i think that's gonna be really cool because we're starting to push the the limits of a lot of the popular game engines that are out there right now so yeah if we can get reliable performance that allows you to both play and stream that kind of performance on a single gpu that would be really good you also got to think that like when when they're designing games like this though that they're kind of planning like we want this game to still look good in four or five years Mm -hmm. so they're going to like exceed what current hardware is capable oh, absolutely. of. I mean, like, the game has support for 4K 120. It also has support for ultra-wide screens. So With, like, the 21 nines and the stuff? 32 nines. Or thinking. whatever the hell it is, yeah. Do they make 32 nines? They do. Holy oh, yeah, cow. it's basically just two screens next to each other, yeah. Yeah, yeah I suppose. That totally exists. Um, but, like, I don't know. Like, FF12 has the ultra-wide support now where it never had in the original game. FF15 is obviously new-ish. It's 18 months old. So they had a lot more room to start planning it that way from the beginning. But FF12, whatever company it was that ported it to PC, one, had to get it away from 30 FPS with all of its timings. So they had to break the timings so that they could move it up to 60. Mm-hmm. And then they mm-hmm. also had to change the viewport so that it would support ultra-wide. So they did a damn good job with that. But being able to do all of that stuff on... A GPU that's not quite out yet, but should be soon, would be really cool. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. And if that's the case, like, if there are benchmarks out there that be like, yep, this is totally a thing now, but it costs 1500 bucks, a lot of people will say, yeah, that's worth it. Because if you're going to be streaming and stuff, you want to have your product look really good. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, yep, that is a tax write-off. <laughs> <laughs> I so, don't know how you manage that. That is anybody. Can. That is a business. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> so it's I mean, certainly an expense. <laughs> it yeah. is. But dang, I need to get my music business off the ground. There you man. Go. <laughs> there you go. You're not wrong. But yeah. like, I don't know. I really hope that for as much time as Nvidia is taking to get these next um, architectures off the ground, that it's going to be just balls to the wall. I really hope it is. And AMD is all like, "Hey, guess what we're doing? Hey, we've partnered with Intel now. Fuck you." <laughs> Etc. I, I really hope that's kind of shaking up the hornet's nest some. Yeah. So maybe not necessarily at high end. <clears throat> maybe at mid and low, I would say, certainly. Yeah. Especially yeah. with the Intel partnership. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. NVIDIA is still kind of, uh, for the most part, untouchable in the high end. Yeah. Um, but uh, AMD is. I hope trying. to see that change <laughs> because just having like one, you know, serious high end uh, company do all the stuff feels like it might have the danger of, you know, causing progress to stagnate a little. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And fortunately, coming back to the crypto thing, fortunately, in heavy air quotes, um, NVIDIA's architecture isn't as well suited for OpenCL, which is what all the crypto people want. So, Good. yeah, that's that's why, like, <laughs> I, I kind of make the joke that, like, you know, um, AMD cards, they can't keep them stocked, but nobody you know owns one. And that's because they're still the best for yeah. crypto. <laughs> Yeah, so y'all can have them. I'm still an <laughs> NVIDIA fanboy. Yeah. yeah. However, <laughs> doesn't stop them from buying up the NVIDIA cards and bumping up the price. Hey, so you 
Okay. I mean, yeah. I'm still excited that our next stream PC build is Threadripper because yeah. I have found that software encoding on video at lower uh, bit rates is significantly better on software than it is on um, NVENC encoding. Mm -hmm. Until you get above the 10,000 kilobit frame rate on video, then it starts to shine. Yeah, and you got to think like, you know, Threadripper with that many cores, it's just going to chew through encoding like it's Yeah, nothing. I'm just going to stick it on the very slow preset and see what happens. Yeah. And it's... Right now, even on my existing Intel 7th gen, 6th gen, 6th gen. Yeah, it's a 6700 right now. Yeah, we have 6700K. Even that on medium settings looks phenomenally better than NVENC does. Yeah. And... I can only imagine the quality is going to get a lot better once we be able to, you know, have more passing or encoding passes over the right. same time. So mm -hmm. really looking forward to that, but I'm still going to pair that thing with an Intel G or uh, uh, NVIDIA GPU. Yeah. So if for whatever reason we needed to offload something to a GPU, mm -hmm. we can use those uh, encoders. So we'll see how that goes. But let's see here. What else have we got going on? Um, FF7 remake. Um, there's been some jobs posted recently. Um, their Wait, existing team wants to grow. Another FF7 remake? No, it's the same one. It hasn't been released yet. Oh, <laughs> Dang, I thought that was out like two or three times by now. Oh, yeah. hell no. Oh, now, no. They've been talking about it for a really long Jeez, time. But... So they're, they're getting to the point now where they have the direction that they want to go. They're starting to hire specialty, um, how do I, staff, whatever, mm -hmm. um, really good artists, um, battle planners, et cetera, because they have the idea that they want now. Now they want to get the good people in to execute it. So okay. yeah. they've started posting a bunch of things for open positions, and they sound really psyched. So I'm really hoping that they're like, we only have this one opportunity to not fuck it up. We're not going to make it FF15 where it's just been a continuous release for two years because people are going to be pissed. They sure will. <laughs> so hopefully they learned from that experience. Not that yeah. FF15 is a bad game. Oof. However... It got better. Um, yeah. So that's a big thing that people have been talking about and more art and assets are starting to come out. But of course, if they're going to be changing things, I don't consider them to be final. Um, let's see here. Twitch has launched the Games with Prime program this last month, starting in March. Uh, it's something akin to PlayStation Plus um, or Games with Gold. It is a, instead of AAA titles, it is all indie Hmm. It is a solid lineup of indie titles that comes out every month. Um, I want to say there were six games for March. They have a really, really cool bunch of games coming out for April, too. Oh, good. So if you have a Twitch Prime membership, it's just there. You just install the Twitch client, and you get your games, and you play them. You've got that, right? Yeah. I've actually turned off the whole free with Twitch menu inside of Twitch, because or free with Prime, rather. Because it was annoying because it's like, hey, you can get all these skins for these games. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. You're just like, you block the element. Yep. I just got rid of the whole <laughs> element altogether. I was just like, I don't need to see this shit. Yep. But now I'm going to be all like, well, um, I see people who are like, these games are actually really solid. I'm actually going to stream these and learn these speed runs. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, Zoe slash Hupfen was doing some of that earlier today. So that's neat. Um, got a lot of really good games out there. I do not have the list in front of me, but go check it out. It's Games with Prime. Just look it up for mm -hmm. March 2018. Other game news. Um, Geralt from The Witcher is apparently going to be joining the cast of Soul Calibur VI. So everybody can get their hopes up about it yet another <laughs> bathtub sequence. <laughs> um, another and With the trend that, you know, that, that Soul Calibur's had, they're kind of doing the whole, like, uh, dead or alive direction yeah, <laughs> you well, know what I'm they had about. Link in Soul Calibur yeah, Two, but that was oh, one yeah. for GameCube, and but... Darth, Darth Vader in Soul Calibur Two for yeah. Xbox, yeah. and I feel like there was one for PlayStation as well. I'm sure there was. Yeah. Soul Calibur Two and, and was really solid, and Three was great. I honestly haven't cared about the <laughs> franchise since. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. I, but, I wasn't that into it. I was just like, oh, this is neat. It's a fighting game. Okay, yeah. I suck at it. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of fighting games, though, so Tekken Seven is going to have a DLC that brings Noctis to it. Huh. <laughs> and he's All right. somehow right. even more aloof than he is in the normal game How? so that's a thing yeah exactly <laughs> he, he's certainly got like the demeanor and dress style to fit as a tekken 7 character oh absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah that's true i'm just that's really right. upset that like they took all of the nice quality of the model that they had for noctis 
and just shed on it. Oh, like yeah. the, the the way that the hair is textured inside of Tekken is just like, ugh. Well, I mean, it's a fighting game. You're not looking at hair. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, but I'm just they're like, going to be oh, like, this is degrading the Noctis experience. We gotta we gotta pare it down so that we can stay at a billion frames a second. Yeah, yeah. you're you're waiting. Yeah, 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 you're, yeah. you're worrying about your anti airs and your cross suffers and your. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, the Hadokens. And, yeah, there you go. The Hadokens, <laughs> uh, the quarter circle forwards. And yeah, and whatever. your half A presses. Yeah, yeah, there you go. The Fuck. We're not board. in Super Mario 64, but anyway. <laughs> uh, before I lose track of this, yes, Chase, I 100% agree with you. However, that FF6 remake discussion is something for another time. I have words. <laughs> I feel like we've already yeah, had it like we've, twice. Oh, we've I know. All got words. <laughs> but I, I have very strong feelings about that. Oh, anyway, boy. moving on. Um,. We did do a marathon, and by we, I mean myself, um, you, yeah, you were there, and um, Derp, Ian, Spectre, yeah. there we go. I was like, so many names for the same person these days. Is but he yeah. still going by Spectre right now? Uh, shrug, whatever. Uh, Spectre or Sarkath or yeah. Ian or whatever <laughs> name. They're all just, the same person in some respect. Call just yourself really, whatever you want, man. Just yeah, a really cool matter. dude who who visits us from far away. And occasionally delivers DDR cabinets. Yeah. Oh, okay. That, that, that yeah, happened okay, that once. Guy. All right. I so uh, it turns out that <laughs> I uh, both Saxon and I had our vehicles totaled for one reason or another in February. Yeah, within two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just the best. I was hit by an uninsured, unlicensed motorist who gave a fake name to the police. Anyway, Brilliant. yeah, it was a good yeah. time. But um, it turns out that Spectre was going to visit anyway, and we already planned all of this time, and we were going to actually start packing up the basement. That didn't happen. Yeah. So Saya instead, in <laughs> we just did like, oh, shit, why don't we do a game marathon on short notice? And came up with a pun. Of course, it was Twisted Metal. Metal being, you know, the ability to cope with bad things going on and still be resilient, etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... We ended up coming with Twisted Metal, and it was all about cars being destructive. And I was like, we're going to do all these car or car games and crash and burn, and I'm just going to make a joke of the whole thing. Because mm -hmm. so at that point, it was just kind of like, we're fucked anyway. Whatever. So we ended up doing that and played a lot of games. Oh, and, yeah. And we ended up having some very nice uh, tips. I refuse to call them donations. I am not a charity. However, yeah. we had some very nice tips. Thank you so much for all those. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very fun two days. We ended up getting to premiere uh, an in a very awesome indie game that came out that same day. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But, oh, um, yes. Yes, I'd, I would but love after to that, talk about it. After that night, going and playing with the devs, and that was awesome. Uh, we had the whole day of car games. Car, not card, mm -hmm. games. Uh, the day after, and it was a really fun time. I mean, it, was it was a way to get my mind off of things. So I was really disappointed by the version of Need for Speed Most Wanted because it was not the same one that I was familiar with, and apparently there are two different versions of that game. One by, uh, like, Black Box or something. Yeah. And the other one is by Criterion, and they're very different games with the same name. Yeah, they are. Wasn't so, one a remake of the other? It's not a remake. It's no, just we just decided to version. borrow the most wanted game and a few elements and just pare it down, huh. remove all the story whatsoever. Huh. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the game plays a lot of fun, but it's such a different game than than the first one. Yeah, but I did get to play uh, Burnout Paradise, not the HD remake that came out, comes out, whatever this month actually. Yeah. Huh. So there is a PC remake that oh, I remember 4K 60s that. a bunch yeah. of things, and everybody's yeah. like. So Burnout Paradise was ahead of its time back when it was first released, but yeah. this is the definitive release. So it's already got quite a good uh, bunch of good reviews. So, but also Origin. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Maybe it's on Steam. I don't know, but you you know that if they can stick it on Origin, they will exclusively. Ugh. Yeah. Hmm. Whatever. Ugh. Anyway, what else do I have? Nope, that's all I've got. How about you? Oh, that's yes. you. I've got your topics here <laughs> if you need them. I so um yeah. Uh Fortnite. Um it's it's become that, kind of a Oh, don't do that. That game. Yeah, it's become that a game very that everybody's been game. playing on iOS and Android and 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 you everywhere. Know, it, it's been around for some time, but yeah. like as we've seen uh, you know, PUBG 
kind of you know becomes super popular. <laughs> it, it got it also, edged out of the number one slot by Fortnite. Yeah, it kind like mm. I I think that PUBG was the best thing to happen to Fortnite. You can quote me on that. Uh. Well, I don't know about that. Recently, then. I want to hear where you're going with yeah, this. Yeah. So, the, well, mm. the reason I say that is because I don't think Fortnite would have as much success without like PUBG kind of bringing people into the genre. That's just my take on it. All right. Um, however, they've uh, they've had a, a bit of uh, hacking issues lately. It sounds like people Gee. just. Well, ah. but I'm not talking about like in-game hacking. I'm talking oh. about like account hacking, like oh. people making fraudulent purchases. Oh, on here game. I was thinking of freaking aimbots and shit already. I'm <laughs> like, well, that's inevitable. Yeah. Epic does does a pretty decent job typically of anti-cheat stuff. Yeah, yeah they're they're, gotcha. they're really like super big ban hammer on that kind of thing. So. All right. All right. Um. But yeah, uh, apparently, like uh, they they've received multiple reports, like in in an increasing number uh, of people just being like, well, yeah, you know, someone decided to use my account to to purchase, you know, some other microtransaction thing on Fortnite, and you know, that's they're they're investigating that, but you know, we're just kind of waiting to see where that goes. All right. Yeah, the other kind of Fortnite related stuff that just brought brought to mind here is. Uh... So, and I don't even know the names of most of these people just because I don't really care about it. But <laughs> uh, some, I think it's Ninja on Twitch or some four and a half million subscribers, followers, whatever, mm-hmm. I was playing Fortnite with Drake. Like really? The, yeah. Like Drake <laughs> yeah, popped on. And then a couple awesome. other like big name celebrities popped on or whatever. And they broke the uh, uh, the record for concurrent number of viewers for that particular stream, like oh, 650,000 right or something like that. When it was formerly like two hundred eighty thousand. Yeah, Ninja. Yeah. Was it? Was, am I right with that? Was it Ninja? I'm pretty sure. It was. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. I just looked at him like, oh, that's neat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I <laughs> guess they're uh, they um, Epic has announced that they're bringing it to iOS and Android soon, and yeah, um, hmm. they're also. Uh, Going to allow an opt in cross play. Cross play between mm. Android, iOS, and PC. Mm. Yeah, that. Mm. <laughs> However, yeah. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Not going to get into that. <laughs> We're good. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, huh. so yeah, that, that's about all I got for, uh, for Fortnite. Um, <laughs> So switching gears a little bit, as you know, I'm a, a Blizzard fanboy myself. Of um, they posted a tweet, uh, and it was kind of vague. Uh, it was so it was like a Diablo nightlight switching on and off, and people are thinking like, well, is that has this... nothing to do with the release? Not at all. Yeah, no. is you know, does Not this mean that they're considering you know maybe releasing Diablo three for Switch? Maybe. I don't know when when uh, cool. Blizzard. Hmm. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. It, it like it that game plays extremely well on, uh, a, just on a controller. Just about anything. Yeah. yeah. So well, they've too. they've seen great success in consoles with that game, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, um, but of course their official word is well, we have nothing to announce, which basically means we don't have anything to say now, but we're neither confirming nor denying. Of course. So. As yeah. Blizzard does, that's you know they're they're kind of used to that. Oh boy, yeah. Um, we're gonna see uh, an enhanced edition of Neverwinter Nights uh, on the twenty seventh. That game just doesn't leave. It, it's you know it, I it haven't is kinda played like, it yet. Yeah, but it's a thing. It's basically D and D, the video game. Okay. I was going to ask yeah. what genre it was because yeah. I've heard it, but I don't know that I've ever played it. Yeah, you'll hear it a lot because, uh, especially back when it was new, um, it was especially popular amongst the modding community mm-hmm. um, because it was an extremely modular game. They basically built it up so that you know you could essentially craft your own adventure out of it. Mm. But it also came with a very solid uh, adventure of its own. Um, so I personally have not uh, played very far into it, I think it'd be kind of fun to do but oh i would it love being to do that RPG, blind on stream with someone oh it being an rpg Cough. i'm told that there is a lot 
of side quest content in it and it oh, would yeah. take us many many hours to do all of it so yeah that is that like we'd have to invest in in doing that but well, uh, it's kind of like me investing in finishing ff12 for the first time ever yeah uh finishing ff15 um what are other games that we were just talking about um there's a whole bunch of crap on my list. You and I can do Chrono Trigger on stream, too. Oh, shit, another one. <laughs> and Super Mario RPG on oh, stream. Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> you really need to experience that game. I need to actually buy a cart for SMRPG. Oh, that's then. true, because, yeah. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Hey, Pidge, can I borrow one of your practice carts? Oh, wait, they're <laughs> we, Japanese. We, ha- we have what, a Japanese one. Yeah, we have a Japanese one. I want to read the damn text. <laughs> uh, good, good luck with it, then, if it's yeah. your first time through. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I could probably, like, BS my way through it, but, uh, yeah. I'm not playing it on I emulator. Also, I also know the story. <laughs> I mean, sure, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, the Kono Trigger Steam port. Yeah, I didn't uh, even figure that was worth talking about. No, no it's not. I, I, I've <laughs> repressed that. I'm pretty sure we also brought it up last month, too. I think we did. No, we. I don't. We didn't bring that up. Did Good. We? We're we, done. We might have known about it, but we didn't know how shitty it yeah, was. Yeah, we like everyone was hyped for it, and we're like, "Oh man, this is gonna be awesome!" And then it came out, and we're like, "Oh my yeah, god!" And we're like, "Yeah, okay, that's not a thing that exists anymore." You're yeah. correct. Moving on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, Neverwinter Nights. Uh, it's gonna you know, um, increased interface detail, engine tweaks. I imagine they're gonna make it you know work better on modern. Uh computers and stuff like that and uh also increase the the resolution of like the in-game assets and whatnot so um and it's going to retain complete backward compatibility with uh existing neverwinter night mods hmm. so interesting yeah so pretty much you can take you know like if you're a, a veteran player you can still take your old you know uh favorite mods and just stick them on the new ones so hmm. Um, that is really awesome to to you know maintain that sort of backwards compatibility. So kudos. It's like Rosetta except for game mods. Hmm. Uh, sure. What's Rosetta? Oh, Rosetta was um the technology that they introduced when they were kind of transitioning away from uh OS nine in Macland when they moved to Intel. I see. Where it just kind of like seamlessly uses a bunch of old stuff so that you can get through the transition basically. So it just it's an interpretation layer. So yeah. Not an emulator. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Fine for Max. Yay. Yeah, exactly. That does exist. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it does. All right. Uh moving on, we've got um Sega Classics. And I'm sure that many of you have uh, you know already experienced this release on Steam. It's been Shining out for a couple of years. Force. Yep. So basically it's 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 pretty much that list of games. Um, but we're going to see it head to Xbox One and PS4 in May. That's a lot of games. Yeah, there's like 30-some games in there. But uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles is missing, unfortunately. Oh, so you basically just get the first game and then Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and that's that's it. Ooh. Sonic 3 is a good game, damn it. So what you're saying is it's going to lack and Knuckles and Knuckles and <laughs> Knuckles and Knuckles. All right. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get that leaning tower of cartridges. <laughs> yeah, they they don't let you do that with any of the re-releases. I feel like this is a missed opportunity. It's true. Nostalgia, man. You got <laughs> you to you gotta get a keyboard binding so you can just keep popping on those cartridges. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if you can make BizHawk do that. Hmm. <laughs> All right, time to branch. <laughs> <laughs> Intriguing. <laughs> Zero must be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and knuckles <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we should probably move on to our first song time for yeah. some tune skis huh yeah all right we start with only link can do the duck walk by hylian lemon from zelda the wand of gamelon <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh yes <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> then a remix from sonic the hedgehog 3 entitled aqua pump by pirate crab and then i've got a remix from ddr extreme uh, called Epic Steps from Tonalysis. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, between mini marathons and what have you, I'm sure we've all played a few games. Yeah, so, quite a few. Yeah, my list is going to be quite a bit shorter because I only just got out of the cast. Naturally, right. <laughs> well, you got a lot of catching up to do, though. Yeah, I do. That's true. So I guess I'll start. Go for it. Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, 2018 release on PC. I was just talking about. It's pretty great. I'm able to stream at really good resolutions and 60 FPS, so that's pretty cool. Um, FF15 Windows Edition. I've avoided going to golden key at all so far i'm level 15 and i've only done hunts or rather side quests rather and i think i've pretty much exhausted where i can go with the exception of going into the mines that's nearby hammerhead so i may do that if i am strong enough to do that but i've avoided going ahead with the story as much as i can because i just like going out and killing things and now is a great time to do it because I don't have shit dropping from the sky all the time because of things that happen in the story. Ah, yeah. There, there are Magitek army units that just like float over in a big carrier and they jump off and they attack you randomly when you're out adventuring if you get far enough in the story. And I haven't done that yet, so I haven't been pissed off by them yet. <laughs> so, yeah, good times. Um, but the game is amazing so far. I, I've pretty much cranked up all the settings, and I'm doing 4K 30 right now, and I'm just broadcasting at 1080p 30. I may change my mind on that one, but it looks so pretty. So, anyway, uh, that indie game that I was mentioning earlier that was on the Friday of Twisted Metal was Mike Dies. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike Dies is an interesting puzzle platformer that they described as a metroidvania in uh, <laughs> yeah as soon as we got into the game i was like no you forgot one core mechanic and sometimes you have to go back and unlock doors <laughs> like mario 64 so it was interesting to watch i played a bit of it um when i was doing some testing and whatnot but um by and large that was you yeah and obviously you played through in any percentage route yeah. yep so during Twisted Metal, we initially went through and did a beat the game and yep. went back and did 100% after that. And yeah. in total, it was about five-ish hours. Yeah, five hours and, and some change, yeah. That was you with a cast on. Yeah. So, yeah. And a lot of that time was spent in that one freaking puzzle. Yeah, the one that you didn't play at Which all. Which apparently they nerfed or something? No, yeah. that was something different? Yeah. No, that, no like, they nerfed a couple things. Oh, so okay. like Wave Race? Oh, what else wave did run. they... Wave Run, yeah. Yeah. What else did they nerf? Um... That one thing where Adam got it in the first try. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Running the, the left boulder? down the bolt. Yeah. Like a legit Stop. first try? Jump. Oh, yeah, that was you. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, got right. that first got try. And like, yeah. we got ahead of it too much where they were like, oh, oh yeah, shit, yeah, we got to okay. compensate for the boulder. And I'm like, ah. Nah, yeah, because we're like, oh, we already know what we need to do. So like, we were optimizing our movement. Yeah. And for whatever reason, there was a bug that was causing much. the boulder to just smack <laughs> us every time. Yeah, so we had to play sloppily, and then we got it, and we were yeah. like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of side eye going on there. Yeah, yeah so uh, that was a good time. Uh, definitely go and check that game out. Uh, oh, yeah, Zay sure. is a good friend of mine, and uh, their uh, indie studio, Sidra Games, ended up publishing that, and it was released. Yeah. You know, like, Mike Dies is one of those Get kinds spoilers. of games. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Dice is one of those kinds of games that really, really demands having an editor. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, just, you know. Some, oh, for custom levels, I yeah, see. Yeah, I'm talking oh, about, okay. like, I you can. I thought you were talking about, like, the or, punny level names and no, stuff. I was no, just no, like, no, okay. no, 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 no. I'm talking about, about like, I want to be able to create my own levels in that because, you know, like, the uh, the levels as designed are really fantastic um, you know, they, they, uh, they do a great job of like introducing you to the mechanics without, um, you know, like leaving it a complete mystery. But, um, I, I personally think that for the more veteran players out there, it's going to, um, I think it, it would be, uh, a good idea to ramp up the difficulty some, um, there are some parts where, yeah, you know, you're going to die just, you know, because you mistimed it or whatever, but I think that um, it, to to its credit, it never really got super frustrating. Yeah. Um, but all the same, it didn't feel like it was you know such a huge challenge. Um, so I it's, don't know. It seems like it would be a good candidate for a, a Kaizo treatment. Yeah. 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 Kaizo. Kaizo. Yeah. Kaizo. Whatever. Yeah. Kaizo. Okay. Yeah. I I had one criticism, outside of what they've already fixed. 
So when Angel is telling you directions, oh shit, they're from your perspective and not hers. Yes, <laughs> I stand to my left. No, <laughs> no, that was incorrect. That was exactly Either that. opposite. Either that. Or she was already starting to dick with you. That could be. Oh. But I don't think it really fits with the story at that point. Although I think at that point it was still kind of, it was still being it was played ambiguous. straight. Yeah. yeah. So, it was so like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a little miffed. Yeah, that, so, that irked me too. I'm sure yeah. you noticed. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but you, you caught on. So, yeah. Yeah, that and the weird thing that happened when you were facing off against the demon where the weapons went invisible. Yeah, <laughs> that was weird. That, yeah. <laughs> that never happened to us. But that Still made it through though. <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. true. You did a good job. But what else? Uh Burnout 2 Point of Impact, the 2002 PS2 release. Super Mario Kart, very briefly. Uh that was something that we were going to include in the marathon, but we were just having too much fun playing Burnout, so we just kind of skipped it. Uh, Along yeah. with Mario Kart 64. Womp womp. But it was, it was mostly, I did play that. mostly you destroying stuff in Burnout. Yeah, that, that I had a good time doing. It was cathartic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mario Kart 64, I had to get my bearings ah, again. So um, it was a good time. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, we did actually play the whole way through. I was one second place away from having a perfect 48 race score of all yep. first places. I was in second place once. You almost did it. Almost, and it wasn't like I was really super trying. Like, we were on the same team and stuff, Yeah, and I, so it was like, whatever. It was a good time. Haven't you already done that once before, though? Solo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, like, this would have been like, oh, wait, I did it again unintentionally. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, I had to pass on that because I'm like, I'm going to cast. There's no way I can do 48 Mario Kart 8 Yeah, races. it was like three-ish hours, <laughs> I want to say it was, so. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. It was 150 cc, so we at least kept moving. <laughs> But initially, Ian's like, let's do 100. I'm like, let's not. Yeah. <laughs> so He's like, you got 150. You're fine. So what are you doing tomorrow morning? Then? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So we ended up getting through that. Ian adapted to the game really well and ended up coming in second most of the time after the first few races. So that was really cool. Um, then Burnout Paradise happened. Yeah. And it wasn't quite the burnout that I wanted. It wasn't Burnout 3. However, once we got to the part where I could just start initiating all of the um, whatever the hell mode it was. It was like Showtime mode. Yeah, yeah. They called it Showtime mode instead of Crash mode like they did in the other ones. Ah, I see. Yeah. I was like driving in the middle of the streets and then you initiate Showtime mode and it suddenly spawns a bunch of cars and it's wherever you are in the map. You just do shit until you run out of energy, I guess, whatever it is. <laughs> run like, out of car to destroy. Well, it's not even Bus. that. Like, you, you have like... <laughs> You have a limited gauge in which you can do things, but every 10 cars you crash into, it refills. Ah, okay. And things like that. So you have to keep trying to change so that you can keep it going. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it once we finally got to the point where that mode was unlocked, it was just kind of like, yes, I did that for several hours at yeah. the time. Um, but you yeah. did have to do some some of the uh, like the story mode in the game before they would unlock it. Yeah, which that was, was unfortunate. We tried we to... Like, unlock most of the game content for the whole marathon beforehand so we wouldn't have to go do all that shit yeah we just didn't realize that it wouldn't unlock right away so that was the huh. one game we didn't prep for oh i see yeah because okay, okay, okay. everything else we we're like okay let's go through the tutorial missions let's create a car let's make a license mm -hmm. and, a, and we had to make an xbox live avatar and yeah was, oh, we <laughs> missed the opportunity to do crazy taxi i didn't i didn't even think um, about proposing that that would have yeah. been a lot of fun or simpsons hit and run yeah yeah <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Fortunately, that didn't happen to either of us. Yeah. Just saying. That's, that's good. That's good. We were too near a police station for that to have been an option for the person who hit me. <laughs> we hope. Yeah. But. We we did manage to avoid that, uh, yeah. the hit and run. So. Yeah. But that's all I played. How about the rest of you? I can go through a really short list of uh, what I've played. DDR Extreme 2. World of Warcraft. Uh, damn it. <laughs> this is my list. That's also, I haven't even looked yet. That's also like half the list. Oh, uh, no. So oh. yes, World of Warcraft and DDR Extreme. Um, and Path, Pathfinder Tabletop. And we talked about Mike Dies. Um, besides oh, that, though, uh, I have uh, personally been working on a cartridge conversion for the Questron series for the Commodore 64. I am Questron. Beep, boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> no. So it's, Sorry. it's not quite like that. It's uh, <laughs> So 
Um, it's by the same guys who wrote uh, Legend of Black Silver and Legacy of the Ancients, but it's their earlier games. Um, and uh, so they're, they're computer RPGs. Um, you know, back when, like, they weren't... Like, basically, you had Ultima, and that was really about it. Um, and so, you know, these guys set out to, to kind of write a, a wor world of their own um, and, uh, you know, inspired by Ultima. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, so the original Questron, uh, the engine, um, looked and behaved so close to the original Ultima that Richard Garriott was going around to every publisher that was considering publishing this game and threatening legal action against them. Ah. And oh, they're that's... like, okay, fine, we'll back off. Uh, until, um, you know, it was the... Uh, the Doherty brothers. Um, so it was. Uh, uh, they went to SSI, uh, Strategic Simulations Incorporated, and this was this was like their first, you know, foray into um, like computer RPG type thing. And they're like, sure, we'll publish it. Uh, you know, despite uh, you know Garriott's um, insistence, they don't. They took it to court, settled out of court, and they had to stick. Richard Gar Garriott's name in the game, like on the title screen. <laughs> oh, that's so shitty. <laughs> and they they didn't even spell his name right. Uh, that's the great part. <laughs> <laughs> they left a T off the end of his last name. So there you go. <laughs> well, well, that's funny. Something just got announced on the internet. Oh, wait, no way. Sonic Mania oh, being re-released as Sonic Mania Plus. Mighty and Ray are apparently joining as playable characters with a new encore mode, four-player competition mode, holographic packaging, a 32-page art book, and more coming out in summer of 2018 for PS4, Xbone, and Switch again. <laughs> the fuck? On um, 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 already a release. Really... <laughs> yeah, I Jesus. guess. Wow. All right. So... Congrats! You get to buy it again. <laughs> well, maybe you'll buy it for the first time. You know, with your I Switch could, that you yeah. might get. I could. It was a fun well. game for somebody who doesn't know how to play Sonic and got yelled at on stream. But, yeah, I'm not bitter. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound like it at all. Stop telling me how to play the game. Stop telling me I suck. I know I do. I don't know the mechanics. I've never played this before. Oh, people do like their Sonic games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are getting pissy. But whatever. So I'll never play fighting games on stream. And you oh, get kicked. And you yeah. get kicked. You all get kicked. Yeah. Everybody gets a purge. <laughs> yeah. Good times. It's like, don't you care about the meta? No. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. So whatever. Apparently oh, that dude. happened. I, I felt yeah. it necessary to say something because that just popped up on the internet. I'm like, well. <laughs> all right. So yeah. Um. And then you know, uh, as I was mentioning the the Questron cartridge conversion um yeah pretty much just buried in 6502 assembly the whole freaking time but uh but it's been a lot of fun it's it's actually I was going to say you can't say you don't like 6502 oh, assembly oh, I I love it and oh. yeah and and people say it's terrible but I still love it um but it's uh it's actually an RPG series that I haven't really played through very much like I never actually beat it I've played maybe like a half hour of of each of them so I'm learning how to actually beat the game at the same time that I'm converting it. So it's uh but yeah, it's it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um and uh that's pretty much uh all there is to it. Just a whole lot of wow cuz I was able to play that with one hand. Um yeah. And that and constant switching between two characters cough as you were trying to level. Oh yeah. No, they they yeah. You uh, had two sessions open with two different characters. <laughs> they they nerfed that. They let so, you do that. That's amazing. Yeah, so you can't you can't log in twice with the same account. But I have two accounts, uh, and you can link two accounts to the same like Battle.net apparently. So I can log in as two different characters at the same time as long as they are on their own accounts. Double we the payments, double the fun. So did you yes. go on uh, two person raids with yourself then? Yeah, so what I was doing, I took my I was just my, kidding. I took my Damn super it. high high beefed just up support character. support yourself now, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I took a super high beefed up character and like put them in a group with the character that I was trying to spam through levels and I was just taking them into dungeons now that they scale, you know, automatically mm -hmm. with your level. Sure. So I could take them through the same damn dungeon for like 60 levels, which was great. But then they reduced the amount of experience that you got for that because people like me were abusing it. <laughs> Jeez. 
So I'm like, oh, well, that's actually not very good for time anymore. That's not effective. So I have to find some other way to cheat the system. I totally never made fun of you. No, no not at all. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you? Oh, you're alt tabbing between accounts. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're totally this allowed to do that. This is why we can't have nice things. That's so their, silly. Their official stance is you're totally allowed to do that. And yeah, I'm pretty just sure keep paying them. It's yeah, like loot much. boxes, right? <laughs> they're not going to turn down money. I mean... Yeah. You you got people who have like five accounts and and uh, they'll have they'll have multi boxing software specifically designed to control all the characters at the same time, and then what they'll do is so like, is this a macro transaction then because you're paying for two freaking accounts? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it become just a normal transaction? I I, yeah. I was making a commentary. <laughs> thank you. It's it's a macro micro transaction. Yikes. Yeah. Yo dog. Not quite the same though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, one is inside the other, but you know, whatever. Arf. Oh, tiny and yeah, yeah. forget it. <clears throat> but all right, you arfed, <laughs> and then I had to go thud because it's just the thing is no. still in my head from Stop. forever ago. That's, Wait, a, that's a long time ago. This is before my time. Let's go with this. With this, it's when Scott got kicked down the stair, or rather, threatened to get kicked down the stairs in the townhouse. Arf. Threatened. Thud. Is that what it was? Yeah, that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, okay. it was punt to puppy. Yes. Wow, this Our sounds like story time. Success. It's it's a deep and it's a thing. Twisting lore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. We roomed together when I was a senior and you were all juniors, except for Kevin. Correct. Wait, no, Kevin. No, he was a junior. Really? Mm? Huh. All right, I graduated before all y'all then. Yes. Mm. No, Scott graduated with me. Correct. He was a senior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we we shared a townhouse. It was Townhouse Seven. Good times. We had a lot of things that came out of that year. Oh my god! Including a lot of drunk Mario Kart. Yes, a <laughs> lot of drunk Mario Kart for the Wii, which is why yeah. I eventually we, I want to have the Renaissance of Mario Kart Wii. Like on stream, we're just gonna go ahead and play games and just get toasted the whole time. It's gonna be a good time. I'm Only down. thirty-two races on that one, though. Yeah, it'll be done like a flash. Yeah, it's true. It only takes two hours. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be like a post-radio show thing we did almost every Friday. Uh-huh. Because I would used to come over for dinner, uh-huh. and then we would do the show, uh-huh. and then I would either play games or we'd just go to bed. And I would usually stay over before I drove back to Sun Prairie the next day. I guess that's true. Because huh? I was yeah, drinking yeah, I a lot more that. during the shows back then. So, yeah, we haven't done after-show stuff in, well, we don't do it. As often, but we I guess we do it occasionally. We usually invite back and be like, hey, <laughs> let's suffer through a rando seed or something. It's been yeah. a while, but yeah. You should do that suffer again. Through. Oh boy, you have no <laughs> idea. Well, I no yeah. idea. I think I was able to stop into one of yours last week, I'm pretty sure. Uh you were there for part of it, yeah. Yeah. Must have been the first one, I think. I'm pretty sure it was because it was early in the yeah. evening. <sighs> okay. Are you are you getting to the to the point of being competitive? No, hell no. <laughs> hell no. At least not with that first one. My hey, yeah. you've had now it's two terrible. seeds below two hours though, right? At least two? Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to that. Okay. Are we to that? I think we are. I, okay. I'm all right. done, so. <laughs> That's yeah. why I was just gonna like go on. Uh, yeah. okay. okay. Let's hear you talk about your gaming. All now. right. So uh, since last show. Request for semi glory. I've only played one game. It was Hollow Knight, gifted to me by Omega Weapon. Thank you very much again. It's the bug game. Friend. It is the bug game. I didn't realize it was a bug at first. Now I'm grossed out. Yeah, it's like it's like oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah there's yeah. a lot of squishing going on. Yeah, yeah. It's, Et cetera. It's, it's an epic Metroidvania, like a true Metroidvania game. Yes, an actual Metroidvania. An actual, an actual Metroidvania yeah. game. Yeah. So it took four weeks with that. I only anticipated two weeks at first, but then it's like, well, we're not done with it yet, so let's just finish it off. Oh, well, we got to do this. Oh, we got to uh, Fine. <laughs> Give me the time to do this. So I did it. And there were a couple times where I was legit angry. Not like, oh, haha, this is tough angry, but like, ah, ah, angry. <laughs> that was fun. Was it? It was. It oh, was. Okay. It was okay. very fun okay. in the end. It was a very good game. Good. Uh, the co-op game of, I guess, last month, since it was February, 4th, mm-hmm. Saturday of February, it was Realm of the Mad God. Nice. That was a lot of fun. I tuned in a very brief amount of time to that, and I'm like, holy what shit, a, this game has changed. Yeah, what a fucking throwback. My goodness. Well, like, it doesn't look anything like what it used to when we played it. Doesn't? I think it looks pretty much the same. Wow. No, it it felt and looked totally different. Like, oh. the UI was different. 
all sorts of things were different. I don't remember playing no. quite like that. There's certainly a lot more content to it. Uh, that could be. Maybe it was new much. area. But yeah, yeah I was just kind of like, huh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's still a very interesting Memoir Pig bullet hell thing. Yeah. It's like, huh, that's a, diff- that's a weird mashup of genres, but surprisingly it works. Yeah, I might have to revisit that with you at some point just to you know, wet my feet a little bit again because I'm not the good bu- bit, bullet hell person at all. And that was tolerable because it was it wasn't like top down, it was, you know, spread out. Because, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I wish that the field of view was a little bit larger, of yeah, course. But yeah, I could see that being useful. Yeah, uh, whatever. It was just for fun. Who cares? Right, but right, right. Yeah. It, it's a it's a different it's a kind of a different experience with streaming because we actually had a person join us who was watching us. Nice. That's so that was cool. that was fun, and they gave us some cool shit, which is great. Nice. It's like, wow, thank you, random person. That's very nice. that's very kind of you. <laughs> We're going to lose it right away because we're going to die, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you anyways. Yeah. Uh, so that was good. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of Smash Bros. Melee just because I'd, in the Wii or whatever, it's like, eh, I don't feel like booting up anything else. All right, let's yeah. dick about a little so bit. So have you been playing us? Uh, Mario and Ness and Falco and Game & Watch and Captain Falcon. So most of the roster. Well, you know. Like a third of it, I guess. <laughs> I was gonna say it was significantly smaller back then. Yes, yeah. it was. It was. Um, but those are I'll play a couple different characters. Mario's still my primary though. It's just so OP in that version. Really? Mario. I thought that was Kevin's primary. Uh no, like he was Samus for a really? long time. Wow, yeah. I just never saw him play as Samus. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Because maybe, well, was he Mario in He was no. Mario in the video. But only the video. Yeah. Okay. Here I was thinking he was maining Mario inside a brawl because you know that was the big thing back then. But huh? Okay, uh, yeah, I had no idea that Double Six played Samus. Okay, huh? <laughs> well, yeah. that is to say, he mained Samus until I figured out Mario's cape thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> then he had to find somebody with less projectile attacks. Fair. All right. <laughs> so then I think he started ma- maining Fox. All right. At that point, someone does play Fox. Yeah. I had to bring it full circle there, I, I guess. I don't, I don't know why you think that's surprising. I, I think Fox is a pretty strong character oh, I was in just, Melee. Well, in Melee, sure. Okay. I haven't Maybe played enough Melee right. to really judge. I don't know. I don't get people's tear system. I just play whatever I find fun. I don't yeah, that's, shit. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I always <laughs> enjoyed people with swords because they had predictable ranges and stuff. And I was just kind of like, yeah, this is fine. God, <laughs> sword characters are annoying, though. Yeah. They're annoying to fight against, I should say. I mean, mm-hmm. it was really fun when I got my, what the hell was it, side B with Ike and just went, <laughs> smacked someone right off the side of the stage. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. Good times. Mm. So, so, yeah. yeah. I'm playing a little bit of Melee. And Link to the Past randomizer. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> last weekend, the first seed was a 244. Mm. That wasn't great. I mean, it was <laughs> About as close to 100% as I could have gotten with that garbage. <laughs> Fair. Double dipped into a couple places, triple dipped into one. I was just like, ugh. Uh. So, against my better judgment, I played a second seed. That was uh, 137. Oh. And change. All right. So I was wait. like, huh, ah, okay. That was dramatically better? Yes, it yeah. certainly was. <laughs> now, to clarify for those in the audience, you are doing open mode, right? I am, yes. Okay. This is open mode by now, so... That's a new PB. And Very that's nice. my third sub two. So I was like, well, okay. Ah, okay. There was number three then. Yeah, because yeah. I was I was keeping a tally for a while, so yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Nice. Well, like, congrats. Well, shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was great. It probably could have been like a buck thirty-five or whatever, but eh. Didn't have to go into any pendant dungeons whatsoever. Usually the item distribution is such that you have to at least go into one. Because mm. yeah, fuck you. But whatever. <laughs> My mind was wandering a little bit when you said you have to at least go into one. I was just kind of like, yeah, there's two items. What? Wrong Zelda. Oh, uh, <laughs> lol. Yeah. Yeah, incorrect Zelda. I'd like to try to rando that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Fred's been doing some cool shit. He's been looking for ways to move entrances to dungeons away from the bottom. Oh. So being able to start on the sides or the top and then hmm. move through that way. So... Yeah. Pretty weird. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty neat. So okay. I don't know that game nearly as well as I do LTTP, so uh, that might actually be yeah. all right. You know what I really want to see? 
if you do decide to start playing Z1R, don't be afraid of using Second Quest. A lot of Z1R players are like, oh no, walk through walls and you have to flute on a bunch of overworld maps and stuff. And I'm like, it's so cool to watch. Yeah, I don't think it'd really matter to me because I don't know enough about like the vanilla game to really care. Yeah, that's fair. Honestly. I think the mechanics that they added to Second Quest in Z1 are actually really cool. Yeah. But I learned about a glitch, actually. Mm. So in the FDS version... Um, apparently you can go to second quest by doing Zelda as well. However, it only checks for the first five characters in the name. Yeah. You can put other data after it. And apparently that can overflow some stuff. So you put two Japanese characters after it. And apparently you can go to, um, the grave and spawn enough guineas that apparently it wrong warps you to Zelda's room except it's a weird ass glitch version of Zelda's room and it spawns the silver arrows inside of Zelda's room. But you can get there and you're standing in front of the flames. Oh, look, I beat the game. Yeah, I was about to say, well, who cares about the silvers if you're yeah. in Zelda's room? <laughs> but it was a weird ass layout that can't possibly exist. It was, it was like an invalid arrangement of columns. Huh. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But it also spawned the silvers on top of blocks that you can't get to in the top left corner of the room. Hmm. And there were like rando water tiles and shit in there. And it was really fucked up. But apparently that's a thing. I learned about that this last month. So I was like, mm. oh, second quest. FDS. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Those additional sound channels, though. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. But. FM synth. Yeah. Apparently there were a bunch of games that had custom sound hardware inside of the cartridges um, specifically for the. Famicom and the FDS. Yeah. And it wasn't just the FM synthesis either. There were a bunch of other additional sound things that went over those two pins. Oh yeah. Konami did a lot of, a lot of such things. Um, I forget specifically it was like VRC six or so. I I don't remember specifically, but there were like five different things. Yeah. So yeah, I kind of want to investigate that at some point because I thought it was only just the FM synthesis channels. There's a, there's a list on some sort of emulator wiki that I go on. I forget. But like they tell you uh, all of the games that use the external audio pin, so um, maybe you can find it for you or something. Nice, huh? Interesting. Yeah, emulators account for that, but um, I'm not sure if like flashcards do. I Shrug. Doubt it. Yeah. Well, they'd then have again, to emulate just... the sound chip in there too. Well, some of them may. I don't know. Shrug. Because hmm. KP was uh, modding an NES to send off to Sky and enabled those channels with a jumper and a pot to adjust the volume of the channel because apparently each game does its own kind of thing. Huh. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, the only sound thing I remember on NES was kind of the borked uh, overworld music for Star Tropics. Somebody hmm. went through, found the error, fixed it, and it sounds so much better. Oh, oh really? wow! Yeah, yeah I, it was, it was awesome. some like offset looping point or whatever, where it totally skipped another channel. Oh um, wow! And then they like put either they put the looping point back in or they just realigned it, and it sounded oh so the sound is so good. I'll have to nice. find that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah very interesting. Share. I'm not terribly familiar with Star Tropics to begin with, so. Yeah, it's the do 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 do. There's like another two or two or three channels behind that never get rendered for whatever reason. Interesting. And then when they fix it, it sounds it comes in actually at the right point. It's just like, whoa, that sounds way better. Shit. Uh, anyways, before we got off on that huge ass tangent, sorry. Uh, Legend of Zelda Link's past randos, new PB, yeah, everybody's happy. Uh, then my typical Zelda under cactus speed runs, which I set a new PB with cactus. Awesome. The namesake. Is it cactus? I gotta look it up now. I I just be a total pro and look at my own YouTube channel. Uh Yep, Cactus. By like 17 seconds. So I was like, right on. Sub 48, finally. Um, which is good, but not great, because it could have been like a 47 and a half. 
You but take a fall somewhere uh, or? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but it, I was behind until the second last level, and then I brought it all back. Oh wow! I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> roller coaster. Thanks. Time to totally throw off my summer yeah, best. Yeah, exactly. Well, my summer <laughs> best is like forty-five, which is yeah. oh my god, I don't know if that's even possible, but it is apparently because summer best never lies. Mm. <laughs> Uh, but that's like true for all my summer bests. Like they're always a couple minutes lower than my PVs. Yeah. So I gotta stop being a scrub and actually do consistent work with it. I think yeah. some of best m makes a whole lot more sense for a game like that, where like all of your ammo and stats and stuff are like either unlimited or just reset mm -hmm. at the beginning of every level, as opposed to games like Doom, where it's like you know you basically take with you whatever you have into the next level and you just sort of like have to plan levels ahead. Oh well, yeah. Know? That and there's no RNG whatsoever in the game. So yeah. it's all perfectly manipulable. Yeah. If you're consistent at doing it, which I'm not because <laughs> I don't play that way. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. I have, that was my first PB in a couple weeks. So I'm like, yeah, all right. So I haven't plateaued just yet. Nice. Let's see what else we can do with it. That's it. That's all I got. So how about some tune skis? Bonus level number two here. Yeah, okay. So let us take a look here. We are going into Binding by Aluminum from The Wolf Among Us Season 1. And a remix from Sonic the Hedgehog entitled Springtime Smoothness by Andre Pastore, Helton Lima, Leandro Abreu, Leo Quintal, and there's one more name cut off here. Marco Lima, and, oh, I'm sorry, and Thiago Quintino. Excuse me. All right. And then uh, finally, we've got a remix from Undertale by Long Box of Chocolate, Mary Horst, Patrick Lanier, Tyler Krug, um, called The Special Meyer.
was pretty stealthy wasn't yeah, it yeah to end in that bum, 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 bum. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like all right all yeah, right well, that's suspense there we go, there we go.
There you go. And we have a Mr. Bond here, so it's only Oh, we do. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so we got some nice focus designs tonight. I believe I will go first this yeah. time around. Go right for it. So, surprise, surprise, I have picked a mechanic and focused on it and done a platformer. Yay. Yay. Oh. Well, I mean, that is a slight deviation from yeah. the, hey, guess what? It's a twin stick. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> that is very true. I mean, we got to spread our wings sometimes, go a little yeah. bit outside our comfort zone. It's not a twin stick text adventure. <laughs> you got to spread your wings by not doing spread shot. <laughs> Uh, Did I just give you your enough. idea for that? Next that month? very well might be. <laughs> Write it down. Interesting. Mm, very interesting. Anyway, it's an endless vertical action platformer. The goal is to get to the top, but there is no top because it's endless. Duh. Hmm. Arcadey. I know, exactly, right? Yeah. I love me some arcadey stuff. <laughs> but what you're saying is there won't be a kill screen. No. I mean, well, technically the entire screen is a kill screen because well, it is trying to kill you. <laughs> yeah. True. This is true. Because the platforms themselves are enemies. I see. Whoa, it's more like Thrill Screen. Oh, what? shit, son. <laughs> New it. name for the game. Yeah, Thrill, thrill Screen. screen. <laughs> Frying and buying. <laughs> oh, my God. Grilling and chilling. We have to finish that. No. Wait, what? Uh, we just started <laughs> showing uh, Elfaford slash Mike um, Sonic for Hire. Oh, no. <laughs> we got about a half or two thirds of the way through. Oh, no. Oh, and Knuckles. <laughs> so Brilliant. yeah anyway well, anyways the platformers mm. themselves yeah. are enemies they look nondescript enough like your typical action platformer mm. but they learn and adapt to your movement style the longer your play session goes they will adapt themselves in size shape attributes and behaviors as time goes on there are three different kinds of platforms in this game. One, the largest group, the learning platforms. They'll learn directly from your actions as long as you are in range, as long as you are on screen with them. They will shrink if the player consistently lands jumps on surrounding platforms. They will lower their friction if players constantly running around to try to trip you up. And they'll add conveyor belts, in parentheses, ugh, because I hate conveyor belts. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or tilt slightly if the player spends too much time just sitting there on their butts. <laughs> tilt controls. Yeah. <laughs> Not tilt controls necessarily, but yeah. something to get you moving. Something uh -huh. to get you moving. Another group of platforms are conspiring platforms. Platforms will cooperate with each other in order to kill the player more efficiently and oh. quicker. Kill. Kill. Well, prevent them from getting any higher, okay. I suppose, right? Synchronized movements in opposite directions, perhaps. Or one will expand in size to lure the player to more dangerous platforming sections. Lure them to a false sense of security so the player mm. goes over there or some false treasure or something or a mimic platform or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Could be so many different things. Wow, a phony platform. Yeah, I know. That's a, that's a totally new concept. We're breaking new ground here. This is all procedurally generated. Oh, right? of course. Yeah. Okay, of course. I just wanted this to make sure we got the buzzword in. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. See, you got my back. That's good. Nice. Virtual reality. <laughs> Well, that would be interesting. Yeah. And also, oh, oh. I was just going to say, <laughs> and Hork. <laughs> and the other major group of platforms, the competitive platforms, where, yes, they're still trying to kind of cooperate to kill the player and end their run or whatever, but they also want the glory of the final blow on the player or the mm, final yeah. misjump on the player. So uh, they will try to kill steal each other. Sometimes they'll work at cross purposes to each other. Sometimes they'll actively try to block each other, such as making rotations to prevent other movements by other platforms. Mm. Or they'll attack each other by infecting them with their attributes, like ice covered and uh. Uh, conveyor belts <laughs> and shit like that, spikes and whatever. They just try to kind of make, absorb into other platforms or whatever to take over and try to steal the kill. And that's it. That's, so, that's as far as I got yeah. with it. My understanding with this is gosh, what the hell was the name of that game? So, there was a calculator game that I used to play that it went from top down instead of, you know, bottom up. But mm -hmm. it was basically a, you need to find the hole and you needed to get the ball through and it kept moving up. It scrolled. So if you met the top and you didn't get through, obviously you died. I'm Fall. guessing it's kind of the same thing. Balled on forever. Maybe. Sounds something like, like that. It sounds, sounds like similar to that. But I'm guessing that, the, you know, the bottom just keeps moving up. And if you don't get there in time, you get crushed by the platform um, or something. Yeah, I think eventually it will start moving up on its own. You get like the... You know, maybe screen, screen and a half grace period to kind of figure out what you're doing. Yeah, okay, but whatever. it will start auto scrolling. Yes, it I will got start you. auto okay. scrolling. Nice. And then the, the the further you go, the more advanced the platforms get. When you start a new run, only a few of the the uh, things that the platforms have learned will follow you. So you're not starting from bare bones the entire time. Nice. Just so it's not like totally boring. We'll just skip me ahead five minutes or something. So yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just you know, get moving. Right. And things will follow. Literally. Sometimes. 
Yeah. Sometimes literally. Yeah. All right. That's it. What else we got? All right. I can go next. Um, mine's also pretty short. Um, maybe not quite as short, but it's still pretty short. So, uh, lane runners, we've all played some form of this where Excite essentially, bike. yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I guess that could be considered a lane yeah. runner. Uh, so, um, it's essentially, you have four possible ap- actions. So you can, there's a button while held will get you to stop running. Uh, you can change a lane to the left, uh, or change lane to the right. And you can also jump. Um, and these can, you know, some of these can be combined. Like you can jump to the left, jump to the right. Um, and you know, when you hold, uh, the stop button, you can jump in place. Um, and uh, yeah, th- so that that about settles it for your own movement mechanics. Um, as uh, you know, and, and you're gonna progress through you know more and more difficult levels as you go. Um, they'll in- introduce like you know jumping, like these are the obstacles to avoid, and stopping, like oh if you don't stop here, you're gonna get crushed by this swinging pendulum or you know something similar to that. Stop. <laughs> okay, keep going. Ah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now over to my left. Oh, Crunch. stage left. <laughs> so what you're saying is that's going to be your next speed game. Moving on. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Moving on can be the name of it. All right. All right. All right. Moving on with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on with moving on. Um, so eventually, uh, you know, these mechanics are going to be combined with each other. So, you know, like you might have to stop in place and then jump while something is coming at you and then proceed that kind of thing. Um, you don't have any air control. So essentially once you commit to a direction, you know, that's kind of like, that's where you're going until you fully get over there. So perspective wise, is it like a straight on sort of up the screen or a side view like excite bike was or that's how i envisioned it like you know just kind of 3d you are running off into you know the distance essentially okay. but i'm kind of thinking that like different levels could have different perspectives you really could have a mix of any of them depending nice. um and some of that is going to come into play because of some of the other mechanics that we've got that might be more exciting if you you know display them like uh, like side to side so or a top down um, so, uh, you're going to have, you're going to encounter portals, which will cause you to switch lanes. Um, the portals will be colored, so they will kind of indicate like which lane you will end up in after you take the portal. Um, so, you know, for example, like if you take a portal that's in the left lane that you're coming up to it and you know, there, there might be like an arrow or some kind of other colored, similarly colored indicator on another lane. That'll be like, you're going to show up here after you hit it. So that kind of thing. Um, but those indicators will only show in kind of like close proximity. So you're not going to know like super advanced where it's going to go, but you can get kind of close and then it'll be like, Oh yeah, this is, you know, you sort of have to make a snap decision. Like if you want to take it or not. Um, some of them, uh, some of these stages are going to be, uh, kind of like running on a uh, cylindrical shape. So, um, you know, you can kind of think of it as like being a, uh, um, Let's just say there's, it's a polygon with with uh, five sides on it, you know, like a pentagon type thing. And like when you change lanes, you go clockwise around it or cl- counterclockwise, that kind of thing. Um, so you can kind of like, you know, just kind of loop around. Um, dang it, I just closed it too. You want the notes or here? Around the I'm in- professional. Around the inside or around the outside? Maybe both. Oh, yeah. Tempest <laughs> shit. All right, I like Tempest it. would be the inside. That would be kind yeah. of a cool thing to do. Um, but I was originally thinking about it like on the outside, but you know what? I would do both. Or Kano Lostos. So you're going to have da- danger zones and walls, which, uh, you know, zone. either like will uh, will cause you to lose a life or will prevent you from moving entirely. So there might be like walls that pop up that, you know, like if you run into them, splat, you know, lose a life, whatever. Um, and while they're up, like it'll prohibit you from moving into that lane. It's just occupied. Um, or it could be like a pit of lava where you move in that lane and then you're fucked. Uh, so, you know, there's a number of different ways that you can convey, like, don't go here. Um, some lanes, uh, that will, uh, heat up while you're in them. So you can't stay in them for an extended period of time. So essentially like while you're in it, it'll like start to glow brighter and brighter until like it explodes or something like that. Um, or, you know, like it gets too hot and you just melt into it, whatever. Yeah. That'd be nasty. 
So, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Just don't stand in those lanes too long and you'll be fine. Um, some of them will be, uh, like, lane change markers uh, on the ground where it'll be like, you have to change lanes in this direction at this spot. Uh, otherwise, you know, like, it's instant lose a life. You know, so, like, very tight corners or, or something like that. Um, there There's going to be uh, some balance board level mechanics where basically, like... Um, you will be running along on kind of like a 2D plane type thing, and you'll see like a fulcrum at the bottom. And uh, as you like hang out over on the left side of the fulcrum, it'll like start to tip left, and it'll tip right, you know, if you're on the right side. But of course, you've still got to avoid obstacles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And if it tips too far over in one direction, you just end up falling off entirely. So, you know, that's a, that's a loss of life right there. So, mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah, you have a limited number of lives. Um, you're going to have more lives rewarded to you at uh, at point totals throughout, which get progressively, you know, larger and larger. But with that, uh, as you run, your score increases constantly. Uh, so it's, you know, very small increase at first, you know, because you're, you're not, you know, like moving very fast and it's very simple. Um, but as you, you know, perform uh, perfectly throughout these stages... Uh, a multiplier is going to, you know, slowly increase. And then, like, you know, if all the distance that you cover is going to mean that many more points. When you lose a life, that multiplier gets reset. Um, which, you know, it's designed so that, um, like, if you mess up, uh, you know, after you've done pretty good early on, like, extra lives are going to be difficult to get. So it's going to highly encourage perfect play in order to get very far into the game. Um but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And as you progress, your speed picks up, you know, and you and you go faster and faster. So, so you mentioned one of kind of the core movement alterations you can do is to stop and stand in place. Yeah, is there always stuff coming at you, or is there something behind you that you kind of always got to keep moving eventually, or can you just kind of stop for a bit and catch your breath and kind of assess the situation? I think in earlier levels, um, you are going to, you know, essentially be able to stop for extended periods of time because it's all like, hey, you know, I kind of want to take a little bit of time and, and uh, you know, just sort of think about this more. But as you, uh, as you progress, there are going to be a number of mechanics, like, you know, that force you to keep moving. Like, maybe you get an energy bar, you know, at some point, sure. like, after so many levels. Or, uh, you know, like... You're out in space, and this is your air supply, and, like, you know, you better keep moving, otherwise you'll just run out. Um, you know, or, like, uh, Indiana Jones, and there's a big-ass boulder behind you, and, like, the camera pans around, you know, and it's showing you, like, running away from this boulder, and it's just, like, the stampede scene in Lion King. Sure. So, you know, yeah, that that uh, that sort of thing. Hmm. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. And of course, leaderboards. Gotta have leaderboards. The, the staple. Yeah. The staple. <laughs> you want it an arcade game. Yeah. I think this would be kind of fun to do multiplayer uh, if you had, like, you know, um, sort of uh, an indicator about how far players are into their particular level with, with like, a, you know, maybe like a little dot or something to see how far along you are compared to your opponent. And, uh, you know, like, you get bonuses for being the first person to cross, you know, into the next level, that sort of thing. I think that'd be interesting if you caught up to other players, then you could mess with them while you're, <laughs> while you're running alongside yeah. and they just give, start tossing elbows or something. Yeah, that would like, be kind of cool. I can see it in actual physical presence in an arcade or something with, the, yeah. like, the four cabinets side by side or whatever. Yep. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> just <poof. Yeah>, exactly. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> Quick check on the left-hand side or something. Yep. And then, mm-hmm. See you later, shitlord. All right, and then to spice it up, the person in last place gets a speed bonus. Ah. Oh, rubber banding! Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> gonna say, why not? So okay, on with me here. Yep, yep. Okay, so my game is called Tinker. It is a three D puzzle, not a puzzle platformer. It is a puzzle, a puzzle game, like a literal puzzle. Yes. So. It has solo and co-op modes. Uh, input methods are... <laughs> oh, yeah. No. I'm using motion controls. Oh, dear. Who a lot? I'm using tilt controls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going to be stuff like that. So uh, your mm-hmm. Switch Joy-Con may well be your input method. So um, the graphic style is going to be something akin to, like, golf with your friends, not super, like, 
involved, but 3D and it has a texture and it's not gross. Okay. Audio style, fun light music, uh, somewhat reminiscent of gears churning and whatnot, perhaps also including game show-esque tension when players start to lose time on certain elements. So if they start taking a while, we can start dialing back the fun music and making it a little more... Eh. It's kind of what I'm thinking of here. Point of view is going to be probably toggles between first and second person. Uh, really depends on what kind of angle you want to see. Depends on if it's like a really super tight corner or something like that you need to maneuver around. It might be useful to see it from first person. Second person? Second person is like behind the shoulder. No. Uh, yeah. It's not third person? Uh-uh. Huh. There's first, second, and third person points of view. Interesting. I don't think I've ever heard it referred to as second person yeah. like that. Yeah. So okay. I actually found a really cool YouTube video that describes the difference, and Mario 64 is one of the things that they ended up bringing up so they use as an example of second person mm -hmm. really yep huh. so there's the two cameras one that is like like super up close behind them it's right? like right behind your head kind of uh, here okay. otherwise lucky two is way back there and you can see much more and the character is a little further away I that's more you. third person all right so second person is like somebody following <laughs> right behind you okay but anyway um most of the time it's gonna be that you are literally just some sort of spherical thing moving about uh usually in a labyrinthine like thing it's like those marble puzzles that you used to have. Mm, the tilt and move Kind of like that, kind of yeah. Okay. So um, depending on the type of thing that you need to do, which I guess sometimes you might be going on multiple tiers, so possibly a platformer, I guess. Not Actually, really. You're not jumping. <laughs> no, nah, not quite like Aww. that. You'd be like toggling something, but I suppose, yeah, you could probably introduce something like that where you could just try to uh, skip some parts of the, the puzzle just by like hopping over an element or something like that. Golf with your friend sure does that by bouncing off of um, objects and whatnot to skip parts of courses. Um, but things like that. Um, the hook, as I mentioned, um, plays a bit like Labyrinth, but there are often multiple routes to achieve the same goal, some requiring fewer moves than others. So essentially what I envisioned here was you are this spherical thing and you'll often encounter different forks in your path, some of which are dead ends. Um, but some of which do have an eventual end, but you'll encounter like pits and whatnot, and you're given a certain par. So you have a certain amount of spheres or pinballs or whatever that you can use, and you'll actually fill in these holes and then you'll start over and you have to go through that path. Then you go nice. over where you were before because you filled in the hole, etc. So it's kind of like that. Um, there are elements in most of the puzzles, or we can build them into whatever ones we want really where um, if you trigger a certain path or if you touch a certain hidden trigger or something like that, you might be able to find a shortcut or warp to a different part of the puzzle or something like that. Um, those would be for the types of puzzles where they wouldn't be randomly generated. So this would be like predefined content if you wanted to do an actual speed run mm -hmm. without it being randomized. Um, they have that kind of stuff in there. So... Um, that's pretty much the long and short of it. Your inventory is a collection of balls. Um, the number of which is determined by the par for the course of the puzzle. So they could be different, um, I guess, materials. But most of the time, it's just going to be old standard metal stainless steel ball and you just keep rolling it around and whatever. Steel balls? Mm -hmm. Balls of steel? Indeed. All right. There you are. Very good. Uh, mechanics. Um, roll around with motion controls to fill gaps and paths and cause the Rube Goldberg-like reactions to advance the state of the given puzzle. Pretty simple. Objective, complete each puzzle as quickly as possible in as few moves as possible. Um, there is going to be a trade-off between how long the route takes and how many moves you end up taking. So you could have a shorter path, but it requires more balls to go in holes. So you really have to determine what the highest score is going to be. So, so it's gonna be moves is number of balls that you use? Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're going to have some sort of static value in each puzzle. And then the amount of time is going to be some sort of thing that keeps ticking down, obviously. So you're going to have to find whatever the best combination of score is. If you want to do a score run, otherwise if you're doing time runs, then who gives a shit? You just right. go as quickly as you can use as many resources as you need. But that's really the long short of it. Pretty simple mechanics. It's focusing on one thing. All right. Very good. Cool. Okay, we're getting to the end of round 54 here. Any mm -hmm. uh, final parting words, wisdom, aphorisms, anecdotes? Go play the new Kirby game. And also, check out Mike Dies. It's true. Check out Mike Dies. Mm -hmm. Check out Tormod Streams. He does it whenever. 
playing yeah. Final Fantasy 15 right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm kind of doing whatever. But FF 15 is what I'm focusing on now. Mm-hmm. Probably going to be doing TGM one shortly. Oh yeah. I've got all the hardware for it now. Did you get your extender now? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. So he's gonna make me hook it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not notched, so it's terrifying because if you put it on the wrong side, yeah, you'll short shit out. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, you're doing that. <laughs> yep. So you know how to read things. Proud of you. Uh, I can follow colored cables. They were both pink. At least when I looked. Well, one's a slightly lighter shade of pink. Great. <laughs> There's <laughs> a larger gauge of cable for all the power ones. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah. It's just kind of like, good luck. Plug it in. Hope for the best. Turn your power supply on. GG. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we did turn that board on, and it does work, and Eon GM'd on it. Nice. So yeah. There, it's already broken <laughs> in And actually you. got yeah. a PB. Just saw like, oh, <laughs> PB. Awesome. <laughs> By like three and a half seconds, except it was offline. Are we recording this? No? Damn it. Yeah. However, it does show the time on the, the actual screen itself. So snapshot, oh, there, you there you go. Yeah. Perfect. But yeah, this was <laughs> this was a thing. I didn't have it hooked up to anything at the time other than the PVM. So mm. but yeah, that'll be that'll be showing up at some point. I need to figure out how to fall asleep and stay asleep so that I'm not exhausted, so that I can actually stream. That'd be cool. So assuming that I, I break the doctor's rules tonight and take my meds because fuck it. Um I should be more rested tomorrow and I'll probably be playing something. So we'll see. Very good. All right. Well, that'll do it for tonight for us. I'm Mr. Bond. I'm Tormod. And I'm Saxon. We'll leave you with our new typical closing track, a remix from Mario Kart Wii entitled Wind in Your Hair by Overclocked University. Good night, everybody. Ciao. Adios.